Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Braypath. And in episode 259, I want to talk about the heightened expectations that Chief Information Security Officers are having to deal with in their jobs today. What brought this about is a recent Wall Street Journal article that stated that CISOs, Chief Information Security Officers, were struggling now with heightened job expectations, particularly around their ability to communicate clearly to the business, to executives, and to their board, and in dealing with the heightened expectations that we now have of that role of the leader of information security um, because of all of the new regulation and reputation challenges that come along with large, the kind of large data breach and cyber extortion incidents that we've seen over the past several years. So I want to talk about 10 ways in which cybersecurity leaders are struggling today with these expectations and some suggestions about how CISOs can address those challenges. The first one is that there is just now much more accountability for the CISO role. Leaders are now being held accountable for breaches and security incidents. In some cases, they are being held personally, civilly, and and criminally accountable um, in, in these situations. And boards and customers on the other end of the equation have a lot less tolerance for this than they might have had even just a few years ago. The solution here, if there is such a solution, other than not have a data breach uh, and be prepared for that data breach to happen, um, is to really look at um, transparent reporting to business leaders across the organization and what your communication strategy is on how you're communicating internally around the risks and the threats and the actions you are taking to mitigate against those risks and threats. The second is that there is a lot of pressure on the CISO role to align security with business, uh, the objectives of your business, without ever hindering the operations of the business. Um, This is a really tough line to walk. Um, It requires regular dialogue with business units and your senior executives to ensure that you're aligning roles. It also requires that you be very candid as a CISO about the risks and threats that you're facing and how this does or does not impact the organization. The third is just this rapidly evolving threat landscape that we're in. Um, We see constantly changing threats that require up-to-the-date knowledge and quick adaptation by the information security team. Um, This requires good threat intelligence, whether you're doing this in-house or you're using a third party, but it also requires that you're investing in continuous training so that your team is prepared to manage that evolving threat landscape. Number four is board level communication that, and this was really at the, at the core of the Wall Street Journal's article, that CISOs were having difficulty in conveying technical risks in clear business terms to their senior executives and to the board. Uh, this is hard. Uh, we see this in the resilience fields with the difficulty in speaking clearly and candidly to senior leaders about your risks and threats from a business continuity or crisis management perspective. The solution here is to practice, and it is to use clear, concise, business impact-focused language. You can get into the technical details where, where necessary, but you have to explain this in business terms. There is no other way for your board to listen to you. Number five are just resource constraints. We are all resource constrained, but limited budgets and personnel, limited amount of personnel, despite increasing responsibilities, will require some unique ways to think through the resource challenges you're faced with. Prioritizing critical areas where possible, putting those trade-offs in front of leaders to help them make the right decisions, uh, and looking at where automated solutions such as machine learning and artificial intelligence and other solutions may be able to help you by reducing the human workload and offloading that to technology tools. Number six is regulatory compliance. Uh, There are a whole new set of diverse and evolving regulatory requirements around uh, data and privacy and information security. The solution here is to implement robust compliance management and be able to stay on top of all of those controls There are systems on the market that help you with this, but you can do this with a lot of the existing tools in the GRC space like ServiceNow and Fusion and others as well. You can even track this in an Excel spreadsheet uh, if you need to 
in order to show that you're following these controls and you're staying on top of the evolving landscape with regulation. Number seven is that is the talent game. It is that competition for skilled cybersecurity professionals is as intense today as it has ever been. Um, offering competitive compensation and professional development and a fun, I don't know if fun is the right word, but an attractive workplace are key elements in attracting and retaining talent. And of course, this is more today, not about your physical workspace, but about the culture and the work environment and the remote or hybrid work options that are available for your team. Number eight is just the pressure in incident response, that the response expectations during an attack or breach have significantly increased. I don't think they're ever going to come back down from the stratospheric level that they are today. These are intense situations, and the expectations of leaders and boards and your customers and your regulators is significant. Um, having a a comprehensive incident response plan at a technical level that escalates into a comprehensive crisis management plan for the business that protects the organization's operations, reputation, and your customer base are really key to being able to successfully manage through such an incident. Number nine is just balancing innovation with security. Um, it is the ability, the pressure to adopt new technologies while ensuring security. Um, so having a clear risk process by which you're assessing new technologies and you're putting the right guardrails in place before you're bringing that into the business uh, is key. And last but not least, number 10 is having an effective cybersecurity culture. Um, building a security aware culture within your organization is critical. So conducting regular training and awareness programs for your employees, everything from, you know, look at what everyone does. You've got your annual training, you have your uh, phishing simulations, you know, to gauge compliance and keep that front of mind for folks. But it goes beyond that to what's your broader cybersecurity culture and have you put the right things in place around that. So these are 10 areas in which we think cybersecurity leaders or CISOs are really struggling today uh, with heightened expectations and a few suggestions on how they can improve. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.